Finland Saga Season 2, Episode 8. Is this a dream sequence? Still having nightmares. Hey, not. Oh no. Yeah, makes sense. Long dream. You fell in a crevasse. Hard to get out. Oh, sorry, was I making noise in my sleep again? Wasn't too bad, was it? He's just so used to this and also done with it. It's a very clear reading there. Man, you gotta watch season one. Still in there. All still in there. He's just living at the bottom of that cliff, but he's got some fight in him left. It's gonna be a long climb. He's gonna have these dreams as long as he's working through this. I've heard that some dreams, at least, are your mind's way of working on hypotheticals to solve dangers or risks or questions from your subconscious things that are threats and you can imagine that making some kind of intuitive sense right they say that sleep is where you form a lot of your memories part of forming memories is contextualizing them they're rarely just factual accounts of events right they have tones so it feels to me like the mind's way of exploring things that are maybe somewhat out of reach of the conscious i'm sure most people have the experience of waking up from a dream with an insight although maybe more commonly it's just its simplest form which is just an expression of desire i've been having a really weird experience lately because almost every night maybe every night i'd say I've been having dreams of my ex-girlfriend. I can say this because I know she'll never <laughs> see these videos. But yeah, I have dreams that things are good. What's interesting about it is the major contrast between how it feels in the dream and what I think about it consciously. Because consciously that desire is not there. So it makes me think that maybe it's just a representation of a more general desire. That maybe she was, to some extent at least, a symbol of in the first place for me. I imagine that if I were to get answers to some of the questions about my life and my future, or to find myself in a situation that was better, that those dreams would either go away or be replaced with a new face. I can feel that it's so many things that once because that relationship was such a significant chapter of, of my life. It's simultaneously a warning, a desire, a plan, insight, guilt, all piled on top of each other. Back to Thorfinn, I think that dream was really well executed because it too was representative of so many things. It's insight, right? It's the connection of his past to Einar's trauma. It's an understanding of the connection between human beings and human experience. It's a warning for him of a path he was once on and, you know, could easily find himself in again. It's a will. It's a desire to keep climbing and fight. It's guilt. Nevertheless, I'll take it. You know, these kinds of things feel positive because you're, you're working on it. You know, you're working through it. Thorfinn is clearly working through it, kind of like the project they're doing, you know, the farm they're building, what your work has accumulated into. You don't really feel the movement day to day because you're taking down one tree, two trees. It's not until you look back at the cumulative process and remember where you began that you really can understand it. And then one day, hopefully, if things go well, realize you've done it, you know, you've accomplished something, you're better off for it. Episode 8 An Empty Man. I also couldn't really tell you any specifics, but you remember the feeling. That's a really great analogy. Yeah, you need answers. Something needs to come out of it. There's a point to it. It's not random. I think there's, there's an element of self-defense and survival in it. But you know what'll take your mind off your dreams? Good old-fashioned... Lumberjacking. Lumber pulling. God, this guy's salty. You wish you could log like this. Deciding who does what is for masters, not for retainers. Who is truly a slave? <laughs> They're like, dude, chill. Take a breath. He's also kind of like my father. It's very complicated. Very beautiful. He also was the savior of Camelot. But I also needed him. He needed him. 
敵は撃ったのかいやアシュラットは俺じゃない男に殺された俺の目の前で Not a small thing that he's even talking about this with Aner. You may not have made it in the car. Mada, Kokoro no sailing at sight and I'm the rose. So, Donna. So, come on, she and I. Motto, Nanika. Motto, Daisina, Nanika, was a retail k i g a s I mean, there's a lot to choose from. It was a packed childhood, countless lessons, huge among them being Thor's, Thor's influence, and what he wanted for Thorfinn. And if not that, there's plenty from a s k l a d too. It's really bizarre. It's what, part of what makes the relationship so amazing, and beautiful, and great. a s k l a d was a really bad dude, he, and he was not like Thor's at all to Thorfinn, but he was kind of like a father to him in a very different way. He taught him a lot. Kept him around, kept him alive, gave him a lot of harsh truths and lessons and ass beatings. Thorfinn had a whole rich dad, poor dad experience, except instead of money, it was pillaging, death. Yeah. The whole time that was a distraction for just a whole lot of other things, other pain that he was burying. It's very insightful from Thorfinn. He's on the cusp of something really important, I think. All people need something something to direct themselves towards. <laughs> I was gonna say, I mean, work could be that thing for now. Like, build this farm, chop down these trees. Freedom, that's the thing. It's not the big thing, but it's, it's a thing in the meantime. Sometimes that's enough, just having an intermediary focus until the big one reveals itself. Oh. He made it look so easy. He heard that conversation, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, what gave it away? Is this guy a phantom? He's still. Jury's still out. I mean, it's mostly just the physical stature that. Reminds me of Iroh, <laughs> but he's kind of like Iroh if Iroh were really, really grumpy, not nearly as amicable or fun or charming. I mean, the guy can fish bend, can't fill a full cup, but also subtly, I think he's telling Thorfinn to fill that gap with work, which actually I think is a great idea. This is another one of those cases that I think the perfect is the enemy of the good. There's no sense waiting around to have the perfect vision of what life is or what you are. If you're blessed with that, that's great, but if you're not, you can't wait for it. You just do stuff, you know, you just do stuff that feels good. I guess one way to conceptualize it is you look for the biggest thing that feels certain, you know. The biggest purpose that feels right, and then you break that down into sections what it takes to get there. But let's say the closest purpose you can see is very immediate or very short term. Well, that's something at least, and you can work on that. You can do that. I just believe that there's some kind of magic where taking action will often reveal the next one, and now you have momentum. Now you have some spirit building up, and you have less time, you know, less idleness from which to dwell on the impossibilities of figuring things out perfectly. It's pretty amazing, actually, how doing small things have a way of making you feel like more things than you imagined are possible are possible. If nothing else is evidence that you can, in fact, affect your world in a meaningful way. <laughs> He's already changed. I don't think he realizes it. Yeah, we met one of those last episode. If only they knew. Uh, even if he didn't, Thorfinn was not the most sociable person. Yeah, Nailed it, no surprise. He's having visions. <laughs> He's really like just zoned out. Uh oh, oh no, oh no. We're having such a great time. 
Gosh, what a shock. What a shock. I wonder who did that. I wonder who. Who could it have been? Here I thought that the conflict and the wheat destruction would come from outside the island. Little did I know. The enemy was under our nose the whole time. Forget the character growth, Thorfinn. Kill them. Obviously deliberate. This delays our plans. I mean, yeah. Possessed. Nobody messes with Einar's wheat. Yeah, but they did it five minutes ago. We can kill them, it's alright. Just kill him. Kidding, of course. But they actually do have a surprising amount of options or a good strategy for dealing with this. They know the old man. He and Snake are bros and Snake is the leader. They can go that route, probably. It seems like they're their best bet. The retainers want to fight. It's their goal. So Thorfinn's right. That said, his rationale is a little bit odd. Or it's good, but not complete. He's right. He's recognizing the evil in himself as the evil in other men. That's a profound insight. Where it's a little warped is it's like, I can never do anything or make morality calls or judgment calls because I have sinned. That still feels like some of that emptiness. There's a little bit of self-defeat in there. The way it hit me is yeah, true. Thorfinn's done way worse. Fighting or killing them is probably not the answer. It's very easy to feel justified in your own wrath, and so it's important to step back from that. Also, these people destroyed your wheat, and it's okay to care about that, and it's okay to want to do something about it. Heiner wasn't even this upset about the death of his family. Wheat really meant a lot to him. I don't talk to this dude. Talk to talk to Snake. You know what would be the greatest resolution for this? He gets a caning from the dude, from the the war son. Ten lashes with that that axe stick. That'll set him straight. I'll never even look at Thorfinn in, in her direction again. Duh. <laughs> And what you receive above you shall give below. They just found themselves on a, a really special, magical island of interesting and great people. Could have gotten so much worse. Could have gone with that guy who wanted to do things to their body. Always count your blessings. Soto. Oh, so you noticed. I mean, you're assuming she even wants to leave. Yeah, I think I mentioned something about this, that it's going to be a true test of their character and their spirit when the, the weed field inevitably gets messed up. Here they come bragging about it. Yeah, don't give them what they want. Don't, Einer, 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 don't give them what they want. Einer had so much wrapped up in the weed field. It was more than just a project. It was kind of his salvation. That's what he had that Thorfinn was alluding to not having is the, the purpose. Einar was not empty and now he has become empty in the absence of what he was striving for. Uh, and they were just talking about it. And here we go. Thorfinn could stop him if he wanted to. Or not. <laughs> oh, Thorfinn slugged him. Oh, he's doing it for Aner. Or did he just lose control? Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Laughs. Oh. Good luck. Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> A little rusty. Alright, we're doing this. If we're doing it, do it. Destroy them. Maybe this will make us friends. Or at least build some respect. Just don't kill anyone. 
The village lady. What the heck? Hunt. Hunt. Hurts me to see Thorfinn get kicked around. There he is. There we go. Guess the head trauma helped him remember what he had forgotten. Is this what Thor's died for? Oh, in, here we go into the chasm. Into the crevasse. Just when I think I'm out, they pull me back in. I have so many mixed emotions. So many conflicting thoughts watching this scene. I'm all over the place. Like, I don't want Thorfinn to go back to that life. I don't want him to regress. On the other hand, it's satisfying, or would be satisfying, to see him kick their asses in a non-lethal way. Best case scenario. This leads to the retainers leaving them alone. Leaving our wheat alone helps Thorfinn figure things out. Gain more clarity on his trauma, his pain, the fishbone stuck in his throat, how he feels about violence, who he wants to be, remembering Thors, which is huge, and also they avoid the repercussions of slaves lashing out at paid workers. But they, I mean, they're kind of connected. They got connections. They're kind of a big deal around here. Still, this is a vulnerable moment for Thorfinn. He was in a vulnerable state already, and now he is once again in a situation with violence. And you know he has that in them. I mean, you know he has that potential to regress into that state. It's so natural to him. It's been such a big part of his life, and he's probably still got a lot of anger in there. What is it that helps him steer clear of that or navigate that, that internal conflict? <laughs> 